This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I will show you how to configure a package that derives three different columns using the derived column transformation. I'm here in Management Studio, and the first thing I'll do is set up my connection managers. So I right mouse click down here and say new connection. And I'll find the Excel connection manager, and I'll browse to find the file that I'll be using as the source. And uh, I'll select it, and then uh, the first row does have column names, so I'll leave that box checked and click OK. And then we'll go set up a connection manager for OLADB because I'm going to write the results to a SQL Server table. And that is the correct database. So I click OK. And let me go show you the source data. Here's that file. It's called Automobile Inventory. And here you can see we have six columns and there are 17 rows. And I just uh, went and found a website that was selling used cars and typed in the make and model and year, color, miles, and the price that they're asking for the car. And what I'm going to do the columns I'm going to derive, there are three of them. So first I'll combine the make and the model into one column with a space in between them. And then I'll use the substring function to um, just extract the first two letters of the make and create a column just for that. And then I will take the color and make that all uppercase for the third derived column. So we'll close the Excel file. And here we are back in Visual Studio. So we're going to drag the data flow task onto the canvas. Then I'll go to the data flow canvas and we'll scroll down to find the Excel source component and drag that onto the canvas. So I'll be using this to read source data. And I'll double click on this to open the editor. And it's already selected the correct connection manager that I just set up. And then we'll choose sheet one as the name of the worksheet. And we can preview it. And there's the same data we just looked at in the file. I'll click OK to close that editor. Stay tuned to see how I configure the derived column transformation. Do you need to sort large amounts of data that can't be sorted using the standard sort? How many times has the standard sort component failed you when sorting more than two gigabytes of data? With CozyRock Sort Plus component, you can sort any amount of data and any number of records. It's free for testing and development and provides the same set of capabilities like the standard sort component, and yet it does so much more. It's not limited by the amount of available RAM, also can accept multiple inputs, and all processing is done in parallel using a configurable number of threads. CozyRox Sort Plus provides optimal utilization of your server's resources, sorting very large amounts of data in a reasonable time. Download the Sort Plus component now. CozyRox SSIS Plus is free for testing and development within Visual Studio. And now we'll go find the derived column transformation here. I'll drag that onto the canvas and connect the blue arrow from the source component. Double click on the derived column transformation. I'm going to expand the columns here, the column names. And then I'll expand the string functions. And so the first thing we're going to set up is combining the make and the model. And so in between here, I'll put my two plus signs. 
and then I'll go back to in between the plus signs I want to put a space so I'll use double quotes with a space and double quotes to end that and it is going to be a Unicode string and I'll give it a name of make and model and then for the next one I'm going to be using the make again so I'll drag that over here and I'm going to get the substring function here drag that in here and I'm going to so I'll extract I'll cut this and put it in here for the expression and then I'll start with the first letter and then a length of two so I'm just going to use the first two letters of the make and that's another Unicode string and I'll name the new column short make and so notice that there is the option of replacing an existing column but I'm going to leave it set to add as new column so it's not right here I got rid of the ending parentheses somehow um, so for the third derived column I'm going to use color drag that down here and then I'm going to use the substring function called upper and I'll cut the color column here and paste it inside the parentheses for the expression and that's also going to be a Unicode string I'll give this column the name of capitalize color so these columns already exist in our destination table so I need to make sure that I type in the column name correctly okay we're done configuring that and now I'll go down and find the OLADB destination drag that onto the canvas connect the blue arrow from the derived column transformation I'll change this name to write data to SQL table and double click on it to open the editor it's already selected that OLADB connection manager I set up earlier and then I need to choose the name of the table which is auto inventory and I'll click on view existing data so you can see that the table is empty and we'll click on mappings so that the columns get mapped and there you can see it includes the six original columns from the Excel file as well as the three derived columns that we're adding and I'll click OK and the red X goes away I'm going to save the package and then we'll execute the package I right mouse click on the name of the package in Solution Explorer and choose execute package and it was successful it says it wrote 17 rows which is the correct number and now we'll go actually look at what's in the table so there you can see we have nine columns and we have the 17 rows copied from the Excel file now I just want to make um, some changes to our derived column configuration here and I'm going to change each of these so that it's not creating a new column but it will use an existing column and just replace it so for the make and model I'm going to replace the model column and then for the short make I'll replace 
the regular make column. And then for the capitalize color column, I'm just going to replace color. And then click OK to close that. Now I'm going to go down to the destination and remove the mappings for those three columns that we previously created. So first I'll take out the mapping for each of them. And I think that should do it. Yes. So I'll save the package. And uh, I did clear out the table. So I execute the package. And it was successful. And it did write 17 rows. And we'll go take a look at the table now. And there you can see we're not using those three columns that were added. And we replaced make with just the first two letters of make. And in model, it now has the make and model combined. And then the color is all in capital letters. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.